day four of the trading course, we're now going to talk about buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity. For the first example, we can see that we have a higher low right here on the left side of this low. And then on the right side, we also have a higher low. And when we have a higher low on both sides of a lower low, then that creates a swing low. So this low right here is a swing low. And we could be anticipating that people have longed in this area. And that means that we could be anticipating their stop loss to be placed beneath this low. And when their stop loss is placed beneath this low, that gathers sell side liquidity. And up here, we can see that we have a lower high on the left and then a lower high on the right of this high. So that means this is a swing high. And we could be anticipating that people have shorted at this area and then have put their stop loss above this high. So that's going to be gathered by side liquidity above this high, meaning that people's stop losses is placed above this high. So basically what buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity is, is where people's stop losses are placed at. Now that we understand what buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity is, we can then start using this to our advantage. Now here we can see that we have a swing low and this swing low have just been swept as we see that price moved lower, sweeping the swing low as it moved lower than the swing low, as we can see right there. So then the people who got long within here, they are essentially out of the market here as they got stopped out, right? So that means smart money can essentially buy beneath this low and then push price higher. So basically they're taking out orders so then fill their own orders and when price is filling these orders we could then anticipate price to target the other side of the range so that means price could target the other buy side liquidity so let's see if price can manage to take out this swing high as we see we have that swing high formation where we have a lower high on the left and lower high on the right and here we do see that price take out that high or sweeping buy side liquidity. So basically when sell side liquidity is swept, then that gives the opportunity for buyers to get long. And the same goes for buy side liquidity. When buy side liquidity is swept, then that gives the opportunity for shorts to get into a market and then send price lower. A way we can use liquidity to our advantage is by combining it with PDRAs, for example. Now here we can see that we have a large fair valley gap and if we extend it out we can see that price reached up into this fair valley gap and did not reach the consequent encouragement and in the meantime price also swept this swing high which was formed within this fair valley gap so then that indicates price is most likely willing to move lower now just because price swept buy side liquidity then we're not going to instantly short Instead, we're going to either look for a market structure shift or look for a fair value gap. For example, here we can see that we have a fair value gap. Price reached up into this fair value gap, failed to reach the consequent encouragement, and then afterwards moved lower, creating a market structure shift. So already here we can use this as confirmation. Down here, price reached up into a fair value gap. After that, expanded lower. So that's how we can use different PDA rates with liquidity. Next up, we have to talk about equal highs and equal lows, as there usually tends to be a lot of liquidity at these areas, because retail traders see relative equal highs and lows as resistance, meaning that they're going to put their stop loss at relative equal highs and lows. So then smart money is going to target the relative equal highs and lows, and an example of this would be right here. As we can see, we have relative equal lows. So let's see what price does. And right here, we can see that price sweep the relative equal lows, as we could be anticipating sell stops beneath these lows. Now, up here, we can see that we have relative equal highs. And these relative equal highs have been around here for a while. So let's see what price does now that it has swept sell side liquidity, meaning that they are now going to fill their own orders and push push price higher. We can see right here, price push higher. 
Now let's see what happens after price sweep the relative equal highs. Then price starts to move lower. So at relative equal highs and relative equal lows, we could be anticipating that being a draw on liquidity. And a draw on liquidity is basically where we'd be anticipating or expecting price to reach for. Another area where there usually tends to lie a lot of liquidity is at low resistance liquidity. And low resistance liquidity is found where we can draw a trend line. So for example, right here, we can see that we have a lot of highs gathered together, and that kind of draws out a trend line. And when there's a lot of highs together, we can imagine that there's going to be a lot of stop losses above these highs, right? So then the market is going to, or smart money is going to target these highs as there's going to be stop losses above these highs. An example on how we can use these so-called draw on liquidity is by recognizing where price is delivering from and where price is most likely going to draw towards. Here we can see that price ran sell side liquidity and we can see there was some low resistance liquidity. Also, price is delivering from these fair valley gaps. So then that kind of indicates price is most likely willing to move higher, right? So then we wait for a market structure shift, which we can see that that occurred around here price trades lower then if we just zoom out we can see that we have relative equal highs up here so then we could be anticipating now the price of ran sell side liquidity and is delivering from a fair rally gap so then draw towards buy side liquidity and again we can see price makes a retracement into a fair value gap trades higher and then finally reach that draw on liquidity which we had and then the example would be right here. We can see that we have relative equal highs. Then price takes out one of the highs and then after that consolidates, meaning price trades within the same general range. And we can see that price is actually trading back and forth within this fair valley gap. Suddenly price reached higher and then ran both of the highs up here, delivering from this fair value gap. A very important factor that we have to remember when having a draw on liquidity or looking for price reaching relative equal highs and lows or low resistance liquidity is that price don't always tend to ran these highs and lows immediately. Sometimes price have to reach a important level for then price to reach down sweeping that liquidity. An example of this would be right here, we can see the price have built up low resistance liquidity and is delivering from this large fair value gap. Then price moves higher and we can see the price sweeps a lot of highs, also including buy side liquidity up here. Then from there, price now starts to move lower and we can see the price makes a retracement up into this fair value gap and then after that sweeps the low resistance liquidity. So that's just something that we have to remember when having a draw on liquidity is that price don't always tend to run the low resistance liquidity right after it got created.